Now, I need your deck. This is a bad one, the worst yet. There was an escape from the off-world colonies two weeks ago. Six replicants, three male, three female. They slaughtered 20... A Blade Runner's job is to hunt down replicants. Manufactured humans you can't tell from the real thing. What's this? Roy Batty. Probably the leader. There was just one outfit making replicants that superhuman. The Terrell Corporation. Mr. Deckard, Dr. Eldon Terrell. I don't get it, Tyrell. Commerce is our goal here at Tyrell. More human than human is our motto. I was looking for six replicants in a city of 106 million people. You ever see this girl, huh? Never seen a buzz off. What I didn't know was they were looking for me. Questions. I just do eyes. Just genetic design. Just eyes. Hello? I'm in a bar here now, down in the fourth sector. Why don't you come on down here and have a drink? That's not my kind of place. Time to die. If I didn't care more than words can say, if I didn't care, would I feel this way? Excuse me, Miss Salome. Can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> you for real. He's a damn one man slaughterhouse. I'm going home. I'm going to watch 30 movies, a movie each day in June. Day 29 of year 8 of movie month, and the podcast will start soon. He's going to watch 30 movies, some good films and some lowbrow. Year 8 of fans, not experts, movie month, and the podcast starts right now. Year 8, year 8 of movie month, that much you already know. Year 8, year 8 of movie month.
Today's movie has been on my list of films to watch um, for the past 39 years of Movie Month. You know, back, I'm talking back when I was doing Movie Month, um, you know, in, in first and second grade. Um, actually, I don't even think I was in first grade when this, no, I, I probably was just getting ready to go into first grade when this movie came out. Literally, it came out almost 39 days to the day. I came out on June 25th. I, I feel like maybe I should have done this a few days earlier, just to just to just to hone in on the the Juneness of this movie. June 25th, 1982, and here we are, 39 years and four days later. And I know what you're thinking right now. Wait, how does a guy who calls himself geek mentality uh, go through life, a man in his 40s, and has never ever, ever seen Blade Runner. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, um, I don't know. It's the life I lived. Le- folks, I have never seen Blade Runner. I mean, it just never passed my, uh, or crossed my path. Um, and then I just kind of didn't think about it. And then I remember seeing there's this version and that version. And, th- and then after years, I'm going, I, I got to watch this someday. I, but which version do I watch this one? Do I watch that one? I don't know. And then I, I said, you know what? It's, um, this is going to work out perfectly because uh, B- uh, Blade Runner is now on HBO Max. And I could watch that. And I looked on HBO Max, and it's, and it's Blade Runner, the final cut. And I said, okay. Okay, but something doesn't sit right. Should I be watching the final cut of something that I've never seen before? Like, is that good to watch the first, um, the first time you know you're seeing this movie, or is it something you'd appreciate more if you've seen the the other version or versions? And I was, you know, wishy washy, and I went on Reddit and I looked, and I don't use Reddit. I, I I literally went on Reddit because I searched Google, said, "What version of, of, of Blade Runner do you watch for the first time?" And it always kind of leads to some Reddit conversation, which is great because at least, you know, there's fans on there who have talked about it. Uh, but it's like I'm so un Is that that's that's an adjective? I think I don't even know if it's an adjective. That's a descriptor that I just created, un uh, But um, I went on there and someone's like, oh, watch the final cut. And then someone else said, yeah, just watch the final cut. That's the best one. And then someone else said, oh, you know, I, I prefer watching the original because it's the original theatrical version. And I'm, I'm going back and forth. What do I do? What do I do? And I, I finally made the decision that I was going to, uh, it wasn't available anywhere for free. I was going to go rent the original theatrical version and watch that version. And then I was going to go on HBO Max and watch the final cut. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you after watching two versions of the same movie on the same day, only at Fans Not Experts Movie Month and only on day 29. And the only movie that can make me do that is the 1982 Ridley Scott classic Blade Runner. Classic? Um... Is it a cult classic or a classic? Is it a sci-fi classic or is it a film classic? I am kind of, well, I don't know exactly. Again, I'm coming to it after hearing about this movie most of my life, knowing about this movie, knowing about the poster, and just knowing this was the other thing that uh, Harrison Ford did when he wasn't Indiana Jones and, Har- and he wasn't Han Solo. Um, this was like when I watched the movie... Now, for the first time, I'm going, wait, time to die? I, I heard that before. Wait, is that in, was that also in um, uh, um, the Total Recall? Because I know that, aren't they both written by Philip, Philip K. Dick? I could be wrong, I don't know. This is based on the Philip K. Dick book, Do Androids Sleep With Men? No, that's not right. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Meaning... I guess it means like, you know, do robots ha- have feelings and emotions as well? And that kind of is almost the theme of this movie. Um, I, I want to talk about the story and kind of talk about the differences that I noticed and the ones I had to look up. 
um, in between the original and the final. I didn't go to any directors or anything. I mean, there were like, it was like re-released on different versions of, of um, you know, home video forever. Um, so hopefully this is the actual final version and there's not a finaler version. Um, but you never know. They could find like another five seconds of a unicorn running through the woods. So as I usually do, I'm going to talk about this movie um, assuming you've seen it and I'm not I'm probably the last one to see it but I'm going to kind of explain it in a way that like I'm talking to someone who hasn't seen it you know I just I talk about the whole movie everything I think of um, explain stuff that you're like yeah I know I saw the movie already but that's just the way I roll it's, I've been doing this for 29 straight days um, and, and, and talking about whether it in, in you know blogs or or um, uh podcast for eight years um, and I realized this is movie, I think if I do the math right, this is movie 239 of Movie Month. Pretty, pretty, pretty exciting. Um, two more years we'll get to that sweet, sweet 300. But we're, we're, we're not even done this year yet. We're not even done this day yet. So Blade Runner. I had an idea that it was like there were robots and Harrison Ford hunted the robots. Right, so they don't call them robots in this movie. They call them replicants. Uh, replicants are basically androids. They uh, are made to look human, and um, I think that it say there was like an uprising of, or something. So they've become illegal um, on Earth, but off planet they're used basically for slave labor. Um, but if they are found on Earth then a Blade Runner is brought in to retire them, which means to shoot them and to quote-unquote kill them. Or you could say uh, um, power them down, or maybe, I don't know. Um, so this story picks up with um, this guy in some sort of investigation uh, interviewing a guy named Brian James. And I'm saying, wait a second. Uh-oh. Have I seen this movie? I remembered that. Opening scene. I think I've seen that opening scene multiple times, and yet I never went back and watched the movie. Believe me, I know watching this going, I have never seen this before. That was one panic I had that I, am I going to start watching this and realize, oh my God, I've seen this. Thank goodness it wasn't the case. There were three things that, that I remembered, or and it's probably not even I remember them. I've just seen GIFs or GIFs or blifs. I've seen um, images on blogs. It's like I've heard the tears in the in rain. Um, the, 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 the Rutger Hauer kneeling, Rutger Hauer like in an elevator and Daryl Hannah looking like, um, I don't know, she's all crazy makeup. It, it, didn't Freddie Mercury do that makeup um, over his eyes with like really kooky hair doing flips? I remember seeing that either on a, on, when it was on regular TV once, TV once, but nothing else, no story. Like I never watched the movie. So... Um, I was excited to say I'm finally putting this behind me and now I can see why everyone loves Blade Runner. Um, I think I see why everyone loves Blade Runner. I liked it. I don't want to necessarily, necessarily say I loved it. I, I, I've even heard the, is Deckard, and I thought it was Decker, so it was Deckard, a, a replicant. Is he a replicant? And, and I was reading something about the... Um, the differences in the versions. Uh, but let's just talk about the movie first. So the movie is about, um, you know, so this guy's getting interviewed and he's being asked all these questions because uh, they need to find out something about him. And he asks one question and then this, he takes out a gun and kills a guy. It was re- Even that was a little jumpy, like he pretends he has, like he must have a gun below him. Then all of a sudden he's standing up. There were, diff- there were weird edits in this that didn't, I didn't like. I just didn't like. Uh, and they felt a little jumpy. Um, so they, um, all of a sudden we find, uh, Harrison Ford out on the streets and it was Los Angeles 2019. So it's funny how people saw the future. Um, and that was 1982. So it would have been, you know, 20, um, 30 something years, right? Whatever, 37 years maybe. And that's how they thought the future would be in 37 years. And it's like, ladies and gentlemen, Back to the Future thought 2015 was crazy. Blade Runner thought 2019 would be crazy. It's like we've made major technical advances over the years, but like as far as how we live, how cities look, 
how we communicate, how we drive or, 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 you know, um, we transport each other that's moved in and changed in such a, a small, slow, um, you know, tortoise like pace that you see advances, but everything is kind of the same, you know, like if you, um, if you were to, what I'm doing right now, obviously I couldn't do 20 years ago, but like the the house I'm living in, I was doing it 20 years. It's, it's been here for over 20 years. So it's like, you know, there's not, it's not that drastically different, but yet we're looking at a dystopian future and it's Los Angeles. But if it felt like most of it was taking place in like a Chinatown type setting, it was all lit up, reminded me of like, like a, I don't know if it's a real or a hyper real version of Tokyo um, that I've seen in, in movies. And we, we see Harrison Ford uh, for the first time. He's going to eat some food. Uh, now, in the original version, we get the narration. And everything I read, it's like, oh, the narration is stupid. Oh, it doesn't fit with the vibe of the movie. Blah, 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 blah. But I watched the version with the narration. When I watched the final version, there was no narration. So I was going, wait, how did he know? Didn't he explain? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that was all explained to us. And it turns out the narration was added after the fact during a test audience. Um, they, they, the studio pushed him to add the narration. Ridley Scott never liked that. And it's like, it because it, it dumbs things down, I guess. Now, I watched it to be dumb, and I was dumbed down because Harrison Ford was telling me stuff. Um, and they, um, but okay, Edward James Olmos is there, who's, uh, you know, if, if, if you haven't watched Battlestar Galactica, you know, like Dwight Schrute said, you're an idiot. Uh, so he's he's there. He's a cop. He's there to arrest uh, Harrison Ford. Really, it's just the only way for him to be brought to the to the chief Bryant, played by the great Emmett M Emmett Walsh, um, who's still kicking, right? And uh, he is um, brought in because he's the best. We need you to work. He's like, you're not going to work. They kind of force him to work. Um, he says, you're going to work. Because uh, either you're police or you're the little people. And, you know, in the final cut, that's it. That's all that's mentioned. But in the original, the voiceover later, he's like, well, he means the 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 little people. I know what he meant by that. It meant that, that you know, it was a threat or something like that. I don't know. But basically, here's the deal. There were uh, six replicants that escaped a con- colony. They killed 23 people. They are of a higher level they have emotion they have um they uh are can basically look human or at least the main one rutger Hauer can i don't know if daryl hannah can um but six of them escaped they tried to break into the tyrell corporation which is the corporation that creates them two of them died so there are four left he needs to track them down and retire them so um, the first thing they do is go to uh, an apartment of. Oh no! First thing they do is go to the Tyrell Corporation to to try to you know get get some information about these Nexus Six versions and, and and find out what they can. So Harrison Ford does that. Um, Errol James almost is not his partner. I think he's with them maybe a couple times, but Harrison Ford basically does it all his own. He goes to the Tyrell Corporation. And there's a little scientist guy with big, thick glasses. And we got Sean Young there as the assistant. And um, he's like, I'd like to, uh, you know, he goes, he's like, this is what you use to test the people I make. He creates all these things. Uh, he goes, uh, how does it work? I'd like you to test it on a subject a person just so I can see how it works. So he tested on Sean Young. Sean Young then leads the room, leaves the room. And Harrison Ford's like, uh she why didn't she's a replicant she doesn't know how does she not know um she has memories and he he says on this new version now they can implant memories to make them feel like they are living their lives he finds it better to control them i was like oh that's that's kind of dicky um so after they leave there right i think they go to the apartment that um, in the hotel where Brian James said he lived, I'm probably going to get this wrong, and I watched it twice, um, th- where he said he lived. They go check that place out. They find some um, photos, and 
like early on we see that Edward James almost is like into origami. He makes a matchstick man. He makes a little origami thing. It's just a little character trait that does come into play towards the end of the movie. Um, so they go do... Th- so he goes... Um, they break into his house, steal his photos. Brian James... Um, I'm going to say now he meets with Rutger Hauer. Roy Batty, he's the bad of the bad. And of course, his last name is Batty. Um, Rutger Hauer was great in this movie. He was scary. He was weird. He was, um, he was like, he looked like a gazelle or a lion hunting um, Harrison Ford at some point. Like, it just reminded me of like a wild animal, the way he ran. But he's taunting him. Um, and he was just, he was the best part of this movie. Um, he meets up with Brian James and they go to a scientist's house. Um, was it the guy's very famous, uh, Asian actor who's been in a ton of stuff. Um, and I can't think of his name, but I've seen him in so many things. He makes these eyeballs and like, he actually designs the eyeballs for the replicants. So they go, um, what am I talking about? They go there to um, try to find information about where they can find because they know what we what we know about these things is they're made better than humans. They're made more human than human. More human than human. You know, hence the song. Um, they, but it comes at a cost. They're they're made to expire. So they're 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 like you know a computer. You buy a computer, your computer can only last so long before it's like, we need to give you a new computer. So they're made uh, to last only four years, and then they die, and then obviously corporations have to buy new ones. You can't make something that works so good that you don't have to buy new ones. That's the point. That's the life cycle of something. The life cycle is, we'll make you a slightly better one, and your other one will start to crap out by that time. So please get the new one. Um, So these people the replicants who know this about themselves are trying to um, like extend their life. So they go to this scientist first and he tells them to go to this, this guy who like, if they can't get to Tyrell, go to this guy. Um, I want to say F Murray Abraham, but it's like something, something Sebastian F W F B Sebastian. I'll just call him Sebastian played by William Sanderson who's always good in things, except he's supposed to be 28 in this movie. I think he was 38 in real life. 25, but they said he has some aging, uh, you know, metabolism, which makes him age more. So, but they did add stuff to make him look even a little older. Um, so he lives in this hotel by himself, and all of a sudden we see Daryl Hannah there. She pretends she lies down. We don't know she's pretending to be homeless at first. She lies down um, in the street and runs away when he sees her. The second time I watched, I'm going, oh, she did this on purpose. Obviously, later on, I knew that. But watching it this time, you could see she like runs into a cab on purpose. And he's like, oh, why don't you come in and I can, you know, I'll give you something to eat. She's like, I'm very hungry, Sebastian. But watch out, buddy, because she's a robot. Um, So he brings her in and he's like, he says, um, she's like, you live here all alone? He goes, yeah, it's, it's not a housing crisis. There's plenty of room for everybody. They drop a few lines like that because we see things for live off world, off world, go live off world. We don't know where off world is, but it seems like that's where they can have slaving, you know, use these these um, androids for for like slave work. And it seems like a lot of people went there because later they're talking to Sebastian and they were like um, he was talking about his 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 um, his illness that causes this his syndrome, whatever it is. And she says, is that why you're still here? He says, yeah, I wasn't, um, I stayed because I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't fit for travel or something like that. So inside the, um, the apartment, they found these photos. Um, and in the photo, somehow Harrison Ford was able to uh, put it in this system. Now, it's the future, even though it's two years ago. And uh, he's able to zoom and enhance these photos, and it seemed like he's even able to go around corners and and move things out of the way and go and move reflections. I don't know how the hell they this thing worked. I didn't quite, even the second time, it didn't quite make sense, but he finds there's a woman 
lying um, in a um, in a tub, and she's got a snake tattoo on her uh, neck. So he prints it out on a Polaroid photo. I guess in the final version, the printout looked a lot cleaner. It did. It definitely did. Was it a Polaroid in the first one? I don't even remember in the original. But it definitely, like, that was like, what are we looking at here? But in the new version, I was like, oh, definitely clear. And it's funny. Sometimes I don't even know because I just watched it for the first time this morning. Watching the final version, I'm like, what's different here? So I found on Screen Rant, like, a bunch of differences that were shown in the movie. Um, they, like, I was like, wait, did he lean out the window and ha- with his with a blanket over his shoulders originally? I don't even remember. Anyway, um, so... He takes this printout down, and he in the also in the bathroom he found a scale. He didn't know what it was. It was some kind of scale in a bathtub, the same bathtub that the woman was in. Okay, so he takes it to like a food area where I guess a uh, uh, an old elderly Asian scientist was able to scan it in her in her uh, microscope and say it's a. Um, it's a snake scale, and there's a ma- there's a maker um, uh, serial number on it. And I thought, like, the whole idea of the in in you know the world now we have the, like the maker. I'm a maker, I'm a maker society. A lot of like people who create things, 3D printers, um, uh, CAD machines, all those like digital things that people actually create things. Um, did the term maker come from this? I don't know. I just it. I, I always wonder where the idea of calling them, calling yourself a maker instead of a designer, I don't know. I just thought of that watching it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So he says, oh, this guy over here um, makes these snakes. They're fake snakes, even though um, they're just real snakes in the movie, you know, wink, wink. So he goes to this guy who's like a very stereotypical, like, um, Arabic, Middle Eastern, you know, like, oh, like Ali Bob something or other, go to him and um, he says, oh, this snake, I know what this this snake is. I sold it to this guy and this guy works at a bar. So then we got Harrison Ford going to the bar, talking to this guy and he's like, um, uh, you know, do you, um, um, what the hell did he say? He's like, did you make this snake? He goes, I, may, I buy a lot of snakes or something like that. He goes, come have a drink. So he comes, has a few drinks. Then he goes and calls Sean Young to bring her down for a drink, but she doesn't want a drink. She doesn't show up um, because he, he was looking at a photo. So I realize I'm trying to think. I don't remember things. I think she was in, she, she was in the, his, um, his elevator earlier in the movie and then, at some point, they spoke, and she says, he, you know, am I, uh, am I, I'm not real, am I? I'm one of them, you know, but I have all these memories. And, and Harrison Ford's like, oh, what? You remember this happened? And he starts telling her her memories. He goes, you remember those? And he goes, yeah, that wasn't you. That was his niece implanted in you. you, you, you these aren't real memories. Um, like, he was being pretty cold about it, but he saw her just as a robot lady. Anyway, down at the bar, he calls her t- uh, for a drink. I don't know. Maybe he thought she's a sexy robot lady. She didn't want to come. Uh, so he ended up um, waiting for... Um, oh, then he heard a show on stage with the snake. So, oh, as a snake lady on stage. So then he goes after... He waits after and pretends to be, like, from some board or something to that, you know, wants to check on, make sure everything she's doing is safe... He starts talking to this woman, um, and she is a snake dancing stripper, I guess, and he's doing, like, his nerdy, oh, I'm Harrison Ford voice that, like, I almost feel like is, you know, wasn't it like when when Han Solo's like, don't worry, everyone's fine here, uh, nothing's happening, and then he shoots the, the control board, whatever. Um, he, she's, like, he's talking to her, just, like, basically BSing things, and she's taking a shower, um, she's basically topless the entire time uh, for no reason except I guess it, and it didn't like there was no like reaction from Harrison Ford about that so maybe in the future which is still two years ago uh, it wasn't a big deal but she like she goes takes a shower washes off all this makeup washes off these scales you can see in the shower she's got the little snake tattoo on her neck 
And then she comes out. She's like, can you help dry me off? But then, boom, she punches him in the throat, goes to choke him. But these other women show up. And then she runs. And in the original version, this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, but it's like he chases her down. He starts shooting at her. There's like a, a, a shot that looked familiar from like, you know, news articles where Harrison Ford's in the rain shooting. Um, it's never really, I feel like they're never outside during the day. There's sunlight. I definitely saw some, but not a lot during, the, you don't really see a lot happening then. So he chases this woman down and he shoots her in the shoulder and she starts running through these, these um, this like shopping area with and running through glass. And in the original version, I said, what the hell am I watching? The stunt woman and the wig uh, on the stunt woman was so bad, was so blatant. I th- it was almost comical. I was like, it looks like an old woman in a dark black wig. And this woman, I swear, had like reddish hair. What the hell is going on? Or blonde red hair. Like, what the hell? Like, I know you got to suspend disbelief for movies, but this like took me on like, wow, this is some really early bad stunt work um, that, that, that we're seeing here. And in the in the final cut I go to watch it again I'm ready for it and I'm looking for it I'm going maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was maybe I was just put that in my brain nope they redid it they 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 digitally adjusted things they actually shot the the original actress uh, on a green screen and digitally re, you know put her face over the stunt woman to make it a little less obvious um, but that original one was like silly silly almost so he, he shoots her a couple times she dead and I guess with this, like, no one really cares. No, like, nothing much is happening. The cops come over. He says, hi, I'm a Blade Runner. Here's my ID. They go, okay, and he just walks away. Um, and he um, he walks away, and the cops are like, nothing to see here. Clear out. Nothing to see here. He th- Is this when he goes and Brian James finds him and says, time to die? And I feel like that's a famous line. He beats the crap out of him, but... Harrison Ford gets away. Oh, no, he doesn't get away. I'm completely stupid. He beats the crap out of him, and then, boom, his head explodes. And we look and turn around, and there's Sean Young with a gun. And she killed Leroy. So we went from four down to two. There's only Rutger Hauer, um, Roy Batty, and Pris, played by Daryl Hannah, left. Daryl Hannah is hanging out with... Um, with uh, What's his name? William Sanderson, Sebastian, J.F. Sebastian, I think, something like that. And all of a sudden, Roy Batty shows up. Here's my friend. I want you to meet my friend Roy. And they start, he, he realizes what they are. He's like, wow, you guys are amazing. I actually worked on you a little bit. And he says, you know, I need, we need help making our life extending. He's like, I really don't know anything about that. He says, well, who would know? He goes, well, Terrell. And he's like, can you get us in there? He's like, I, I don't know if I can. And meanwhile, there's a there's a chessboard, and Rucka Howard's moving chess pieces around, and, and he's like, no, no, that's you got to move this. You, that's the wrong move. You want to do this, and he says, oh, you, who's your your partner? Must be smart. He goes, oh yeah, Terrell, he's the smartest. So you know they still have a relationship. Um, so while that is going on, we get um, Roy. Now, um, I think this happens now where Sean Young and Harrison Ford go back to the apartment. I'll just say this is what happens. Believe me, if I, not, yeah, Sean Young and Harrison Ford go back to the apartment. It, this Sean Young's like, I'm not in the business. I am the business. Like, she realizes what she is. Um, she, Harrison Ford just kind of like moses about on the piano. In the final version, he has some weird dream sequence where he sees a unicorn running. This was like a stickler for for Ridley Scott to get this back in the movie. Something on screen rants like, oh, this is kind of showing that, that you know, he's having a strange dream and, like, this could be a, a memory inside uh, his head is, is you know, proving that maybe the main character, Deckard, I- is a replicant as well. I see no... Um, I saw nothing that, that were to um, make me believe that. I just I know people love looking for theories and maybe that was put in there to do that because I have no effing clue why that unicorn was needed or what it solved. It, it for I was like, is that a unicorn? What the hell now? I'm thinking was some of the origami also unicorn? So they're saying you know a unicorn is something that's one very different from everything else. 
And um, without the voiceover, you know, at the, li- at the line at the end, maybe it's a little different. Hmm, now I'm thinking, wait, are they trying to set us up to make us think this? So um, Harrison Ford sees Sean Young. She comes out. She kind of wipes off her bad makeup, lets her hair down. And she goes, he goes to, oh, she starts playing the piano. And he's like, she's like, I don't even know if I know how to play or if it's just a memory that was implanted. He goes, well, you play beautifully. And then he goes to kiss her um, because all of a sudden now he wants to kiss her. And she's like, no, she leaves. And then it's a, the, it's not any less uncomfortable in the final cut. He basically grabs her, throws her up against the wall and says, tell me you want me to kiss you. Kiss me. Say it. Kiss me. Tell me you want me. You want. I was like, is, is there sexual assault happening right now on a, on an Android? Am I seeing this? Is this happening? I feel like this would be much more scrutinized today. Um, I don't know if it was scrutinized then. I didn't see anything about it in any version. I thought maybe they'd cut a couple things that I thought they'd get rid of. I thought maybe they'd edit that one down. Nope. Apparently that's supposed to be sexy and sultry. It wasn't. Number two, I thought, I was like, oh, there's no way they're going to keep this stupid saxophone music in. Nope, they left the saxophone music in too. Like, like I, I mean, this was like right out of, I thought maybe I was going to see... Um, uh, Glenn Fry, like in a like a sh- shoulder padded jacket outside, you know, like with a cigarette. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so, okay, what happens now? They um, they make sweet sweet love. Now he goes back to work. He now knows that. Um, okay, I remember what happens now. Uh, Rucker Hauer and Sebastian go to Tyrell. Tyrell. They, um, because he, he, they need, he needs answers on how his life needs to be extended. Uh, and, you know, the guy's like, you know, I can't do that. There's, there's just no way to do it. He's basically saying there's no way to do it. I'm sorry. Rucka Howell, he, he's like, but oh, I'm going to die. And he goes, um, I've, you know, I, I don't want to die. And he says something like, uh, uh, a light that's burned twice as fast, uh, you know, uh, burns brightest or something and you've you've done amazing things he's like I've done questionable things and then the guy gets really close Rucka Howard kisses him on the lips and then squeezes his brain until he po- until it pops in the final version they show a little more blood in the eyes and then he, he I think in the original version doesn't say this he scares Sebastian a little and Sebastian looks nervous but in the final cut he's like no no come come Sebastian and then we see him leaving the ele- and down the going down the elevator thing himself, so he obviously killed this guy too. Then we hear Harrison Ford is in his car and he gets a call from M. Emmett Walsh, I think, saying, um, "You, um, okay? Here's what happened. Um, this guy Terrell and Sebastian were found dead. Sebastian lived here, so go try out there. So they go to the now uh, Harrison Ford goes to the hotel where uh, Daryl Hannah is. She." Uh, which was really, I thought was really cool, was she kind of pretended to be one of these weird toys that the guy Sebastian made until um, until Harrison Ford like pulled off a veil and then boom, she attacks him. She she gets him like a scissor hold on the head. In the original version, um, she he smashes his head twice. In the final cut, she smashes his head and then grabs him by the nose, which felt like Three stooges Uh He hits the ground. And then for some reason, instead of squeezing him or stomping him to death, she does gymnastics. She flips, 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 flips away. And then flips, flips, flips right at him. And it's like right out of like Indiana Jones. Didn't want to fight that swordsman. Just pulled the gun and shot him. Harrison Ford just goes bang. And then she's like, she's flipping around like a fried egg. And then boom, and then boom, another shot. In the original version, two shots. In the final version, three shots. Um, And earlier in the movie, they said like, you can't kill these replicants. They don't feel pain until they, in, in, unless you kill them, or you can't hurt them unless you kill them. I was like, I don't know. She looked like she was hurting pretty bad there. Um, so she's dead now. Now there's only one left. Rucka Hauer shows up, and then we get probably the coolest moment of the movie, the coolest segment of the movie, where they're, um, Rucka Hauer finds, well, first it's weird. Rucka Hauer finds her, and I think she's like, like hanging there dead, like, oh, and he gets down with his mouth and pushes her tongue back in her mouth. I thought, okay, more creepiness, sure, sure, sure. Then he's walking around, Harrison Ford goes to shoot him. Then we got the cat and mouse, cat and mouse, bing, bang, boom, bang, boom. Um, 
Now, this was probably the, like it was weird because Rucker Howard was doing some weird things. He sticks his head through a wall. It felt like, welcome to prime time, bitch. You know, it felt like Freddie a little bit. He says some weird comments, but he's also doing like, you know, four or five, going to stay alive. Okay, that's also kind of Freddie. Weird. Um, but he, I don't think I noticed this till the second time viewing where he's clenching his hand. He's like, not now, not now. And he puts a nail through his hand. I think he was putting a nail through his hand so he can get more movement in his hand. And he was noticing things were happening because he was nearing his expiration. He said it was made in 2016, and now it's 2019. Um, so I guess you're counting 2016, the full year, 2017, the full year, 2018, the full year. And we're nearing the end of 2019, so there's your full year cycle? Because wouldn't it be to 17, to 18, to 19, to 20, I guess? Unless this happened on New Year's Day. I don't know exactly. Unless, did I miss something where they said some of them have a different lifespan? I don't know. Um, but they chase each other around. They're outside a building. Um, Harrison Ford almost falls off a building, climbs up. Um, then he goes to jump over another building. Doesn't quite make it. Rukahawa makes it perfectly. And he's holding a dove the whole time. Why? I don't know why he's holding a dove. It looks kind of cool and also looks kind of weird. And then Harrison Ford's about to slip off and he grabs him and lifts him up. First he says, you feel the fear? That's what it's like being enslaved all the time. That's what it's like for us, always living in fear. You give these things emotion and then you treat them like shit. They're going to have emotions that are not good. Um, But he saves his life and it doesn't quite make sense. I I think the voiceover mentioned, I don't know why he saved my life. But in this time, uh, they didn't even... They didn't, like, they didn't have to mention it. Um, he lifts him up. He, you know, Harrison Ford backs up. He's like, oh, he's lying there. And then Rucker Howe gives a really cool speech where he's like, I, you know, you won't believe the things I've seen. I've seen, you know, this over Orion. I've seen blah, blah, blah over the gate. Um, um, and, it, and all these memories will be lost like tears in rain. And then he says, time to die. And instead of it, like where it was this uh, Brian Jones saying it's time to die for Harrison Ford, he was saying time to die for me. And then he just kind of hunches over and dies. And the dove gets away and goes, I'm a dove, yay. And then Edward James almost comes and shoots the dove. No, that didn't happen. So um, he, Harrison Ford survives, he gets out, and um, Edward James almost is there. And uh, he's like, I, I guess you're done now. And Harrison Ford's like, I'm done forever. He kicks, him his, he kicks his gun over to him and says, um, he stops and turns and says, too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? Now, is that his way of saying, I know she's a, well, they know she's a replicant. Because he was then later, later t- said, you know, he goes, there's only three left. He goes, no, there's four left. Because... They knew now that they have to get rid of the um, the Sean Young person, even though Harrison Ford was never going to do that. So there was a couple things like, I guess Edward James always was saying, you know, they only have four year spans, so too bad she's going to die. Um, but then again, who you know who does, who does who doesn't die? Uh, and then was that supposed to be saying like you're also a replicant with the unicorns? I don't know. I don't know. Um, he goes back to his apartment and he's Sean Young's under the blankets and she goes to, um, he pulls back from her uh, a little sheet and he goes to lean over and listens and she's alive. He gives her a kiss. She wakes up and they're like, come on, we got to get out of here. They're going to sneak out of here. They look around and um, he, they're like, come on, let's get on the elevator. They get on the elevator quickly And he turns around, he looks down, and she stepped over origami. And you know that means Edward James almost was here. I was fully expecting her to be in the elevator and then him to, like, pop out of the elevator somehow. I don't know. Or, like, her to go into the elevator, him to look, turn around, and then see Edward James almost holding her, going, sorry, Deckard, this is is what we do. And boom, pulling the trigger. I almost felt like that would have been, like, oh, badass, like, such a sad ending. Uh, instead, um, I guess Edward James almost is like, you know what? I ain't a bad guy. You can go do what you got to do. And, and you want to do it with your robot lady? Go go for it, you know? Get your freak on. Um, so they get on the elevator. The elevator closes. In the final cut, that's when the movie ends. 
it seems like that's when Ridley Scott always wanted the movie to end. Um, not def, not definite, just kind of like you don't know what where their next adventure is going to take you. They're going off, um, and they're going to you know live whatever time they have left together. I don't even know when she was created. I don't know how much time she has left. She actually asked Harrison for that. He goes, oh, it's um, it's classified. She goes, you're a cop. He goes, I, I, I didn't read it. So he doesn't even know, um, if you believe that. And that's how the final cut ended. But the movie that was in the theater, the movie that I watched first this morning, they get, in the, they get into uh, the elevator, and then the next shot, they see them flying up north. And they're fl- like they're flying in their flying car, whatever it is. They're in. Remember, she she said earlier, if I go north, will you follow me? He goes, No, I owe you. Someone will chase you, but it won't be me. So now they're flying up north. Um. I think did he say something about in the voiceover? He says, uh, you know, the doctor told me that she was a different one. She was, you know, different. She was made that she wouldn't expire. So they added this voiceover this saying that the doctor, who never said this, I, I was like, did I miss something? No, they added that in to give you the quote-unquote and what is now known as the happy ending of the movie where they, we see that she's not going to die. So does that mean she's just going to stay the same age and she's going to watch Harrison Ford wither away? Um, I wonder. I wonder what, we're gonna, what we would find out if there was only another movie. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think what else to talk about. That's kind of where it ended. So they kind of get their quote unquote happy ending. They go live off their lives and she's not going to die. Um, but that's not the movie that really Scott wanted you to see. And, um, but now I've seen it. I've seen both versions. I watched two versions of the same movie today. That's the kind of shit you're only going to get at movie month, my friends. Um, I'm trying to, th- is this is not like a, you know, Harrison Ford is in some giant, is it tentpole? But he's in some giant movies that are like, you know, iconic. Indiana Jones, iconic. Her, um, Han Solo, iconic. Rick Deckard, cult, I'll say. Not iconic. Just cult, sci-fi, cult classic. This is like, I don't know what it did in the box office. I don't know, you know, I don't know how... It was like, obviously, it wasn't so big that they made, you know, Blade Runner 2 and 3 right then and there. Um, I guess there were books that were made that were made with cooperation of Philip K. Dick. Um, I would be interested in reading the book. I would. I thought it was like a short story, but I would be interested in reading the novel. Just just to see the differences. Um, and, uh, of course, they, they, they waited, you know, almost, you know, 30-something years to 35, I'm going to say, Right. 1982. Hey, Google, how many years is it between 1982 and 2017? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other you know what? You, 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 you no help. You no help. You no help. Thank you. Um, so, okay, I'm going to do the math. I'm going to do the math Howard Stern style. Ready? So we got 1982, 1992, 2002, um, 1992, 2002, 2012. That gets you. 30 years right there. Then you go 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's five years. So 35 years. Because it came out in 2017, right? The sequel. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we're not watching that movie. We're not talking about that movie today. Um, so what else do I talk about here for, for Blade Runner? I feel like this, is, this was like an iconic moment for me to finally watch this movie, and I've, it's almost the longest episode of this of this uh, season so far. Um, but I think I've kind of covered it. Um, you know, movie-wise, I liked it, and I get why it is revered. Um, it is, like, stylistically so unique and so um, cool to look at. I love, uh, you know, like, miniatures, models, and matte painting. That is like the, I don't know if it's the golden age of Hollywood, but it is like my golden age of Hollywood. I think of these old, all these old action movies or Indiana Jones movies and how they used, how they, you know, took advantage of miniatures and tricks of the eye, you know, practically, practical effects of just painting something so it looks like it's a distant, you know, off in the distance. You got that in Star Wars, you'd get that all the time. 
Um, and now everything is just a green screen and you can make it look 10 times better. Um, but it's something about knowing that it's not the real thing or not digital that makes it cool. Now, I think even the spaceships going by, like, they looked good. Um, but you know they were, you know, what if composite, whatever the hell that was used, you know, back in the olden days. Uh, I guess in the new version, they cleaned that up a little bit, but not to the point where it was like Star Wars, where you could just tell it, everything was perfectly sharp um, and perfectly digital. It was definitely um, just, they said they tweaked a few things. Uh, namely, you know, uh, Joanna Cassidy's stunt woman. The, the, the part where I was like, oh my goodness, what am I looking at here? Um, but other than that, and then other than the very uncomfortable scene where Harrison Ford kind of roughs up Sean Young to, to, to basically, you know, make, make sweet Android love with her. Um, those parts were, that part was just uncomfortable. The, 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 um, the stunt woman part was just silly, but other than that, it was definitely a pretty unique movie and really cool to look at. Uh, and again, I'm looking at it from, from someone almost 40 years later, who's seen all kinds of sci-fi done over and over again to the point where you, you, things that I've seen first are aping this, are stealing from this, are copying this, are, are um, trip, you know, doing a tribute to this. Like, this, the, this is something that was original. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, it's not a Star Wars type thing where it's not, it's not in space. It's kind of a small movie when you think about it. There are, there's just these, you know, these bad guys, they just happen to be robots. And this good guy happens to be like a futuristic cop. You could tell this same story almost, you know, with, um, with you know, in the West or, or in, the, in, the, in the 50s, 60s, 70s. You could just switch just little tweaks where it's not someone who creates them. It's like, you know, um, it's just a boss or there's a disease or they have an antidote or something like that, you know. And you have to get to the right person. Uh, it's it is it is just a kind of and and it had that little detective film noir feel to it with the voiceover. You take that away, it kind of takes away from that feel. But it seems like that is not Ridley Scott never wanted the voiceover. That was more for the dummies in the audience who needed to be told things who couldn't figure it out. He's probably like, I don't know, do a voiceover. That's my Ridley Scott. That's that's a damn good Ridley Scott. Um, I think, I think I've talked it or covered everything I wanted to talk about. I was just I was reading about the different versions, how they go all the way back from like a work print to the um, to the U.S. theatrical cut to an international theatrical cut. Uh, m- most of those were mostly the same um, to the U.S. broadcast cut that I guess was shown in 1986. Then there was the director's cut in 92. And then the final cut in 2017. Even this final cut is is 14 years ago. My goodness gracious. Um, but I, oh, one thing I, yeah, I was like, that's definitely different. Because in the theatrical cut, in the original version, he says to the guy um, that he, when he kills the guy who creates things, he calls him a, a fucker. And then in the final cut, he calls him father. And I thought, oh, that is, is much more effective, way better, way better effect, uh, way better um, use. Uh, so I, I would have to say going forward to me, the final cut is the version. I because that is what the director wanted the whole time. Now, I I'm going to you're going to get annoyed when I say this, but I look at the Justice League and then I look at the Snyder Cut for the Justice League. Okay, you want to say ridiculous four hours long? You want to say uh, ridiculous like, you know, um, it's like basically giving in the whim to this overindulgent, um, overdramatic, overstylized director? Okay, but if I'm ever going to think of the movie Justice League again, I'm going to think of the Snyder Cut as the definitive cut with the things I saw in there. That is canon, quote-unquote, compared to the original theatrical two-hour, you know, shit fest that Joss Whedon shit out. So just like this, um, even though the original is what people lived with for years, the final version is, to me, the definitive version of, of Blade Runner 
Decker didn't talk to me. Decker didn't talk to me. There was a dancing unicorn for some reason. And we don't know what happened. We don't, she, she, she's not a live forever uh, uh, replicant. And we don't know what happened. They didn't go off and fly off into the, into the forest. Um, so I have no idea what, will I find out what happened? I don't know. Not today. Boy, am I, am I bad at spoilers? Am I bad at hinting what tomorrow's movie might be? My, my friends, today's done. I am done talking about this. Um, but I'm so, I'm so glad I watched it. I was actually psyched to watch both versions. I was like, I'm doing this. I'm watching both versions. I woke up a little before 7 this morning and watched the original cut before work and the theatrical cut. And then around lunchtime, I started the final cut. I realized I don't have to pay as much attention because it's the same movie. It's it's just little twists and turns, little little tweaks and little changes, and of course that little end that ending, uh, which I finished. Uh, I think maybe after dinner. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, I had a salad for dinner. It was delicious. I mean, it's, you put a little steak in it, it becomes less of a salad. There's a little some noodles and some crunchy things, some pickles. Okay, it. I had food that also had lettuce in it, which I guess just to me classifies it as a salad. And then I finished. Um, but I uh, finished Blade Runner, the final cut. And, uh, and now this is the final me talking about Blade Runner uh, because I'm not going to talk about Blade Runner from 1982 anymore, my friends. So I just want to say a few things real quick. Tomorrow is the last day of movie month. And I can't believe it. I am excited to get there. Um, and uh, wow, one more movie to go. It's like, it, it's going to feel weird on Thursday when I don't have a movie to watch. And I don't, I can watch something and not be like, oh crap, I got to remember this. And I got to, I got to do a podcast about this afterwards. I'm like, oh great, I can watch Lego Masters and not podcast about it. Fantastic. Um, but my goodness, we're almost there. We're almost there. But we're not quite there yet, my friends. We still have one more day to go. So can I count on you? Can I count on you seeing you tomorrow? I hope so. Uh, But until then, I want to thank you guys so much for listening and for subscribing, for sticking with me. Um, You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and um, Letterboxd at Geek Mentality. The Facebook page is simply fans.experts. And the website, everything we do, can all be found at fansnotexperts.com. So once again, just a quick thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing. And until tomorrow, my friends, here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kind of handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this episode That's not experts